what are the top three things that sport coaches neglect <clears throat> when it comes to an athlete's ability to perform at their best? Yeah, I'd, so I, I'm going to throw this out. It depends. You're going to hear this a lot um, in this field because it really is. There's a lot of it depends variables. Um, common things that you will often see, however, um, lack of focus or emphasis in a warm up and a down regulation or cool down. Um, you know, not preparing the body for the demands you're about to ask of it. Um, so you can get the most out of it and then pulling yourself back out of that fight or flight situation. Because when we go into sport or training or exercise, we are putting the body into a fight or flight state. Um, we're doing it intentionally. And so if we do not pull ourselves out of it, especially this day and age with all the blue light and all the, you know, external stressors we have, um, you know, that just elevates significantly. And so if we can't pull ourselves back out, some simple basic breath work. Um, you, I listened to uh, Dr. Galpin and Huberman. Uh, this is kind of a, a joke lately as if Huberman said, um, Andrew Huberman's a neurophysiologist through Stanford, neurobiologist, I think physiologist, I don't remember. He works with the central nervous system of the brain. He's very intelligent. Um, but they talk a lot about that. And so, um, you know, being able to pull yourself out through your breath is really one of the big keys, but then some, some easy mobility work. What's some of the muscles that we just worked hard and stretched out or stressed out, I mean, and let's create a little bit more length or elasticity in them at the end. Um, it's going to help increase blood flow to things. Um, so I think that's a big, big one. There is, is lack of emphasis or focus in a warm up and a cool down. Um, another one that I see, and I'm guilty of this, I still have to fight myself on this at times, but focus on mastering the basics longer. Um, really just keeping an emphasis in mastering the basics. Um, you know, the, the six fundamental human movements, squat, hinge, press, pull, lunge, and carry. If you get really good at those movements, you're going to be able to carry those over in almost any demand that sports going to play. There's other things. So we're going to move through different planes. You know, you start talking about lunge, like are we doing a lateral lunge or reverse lunge, forward lunge, step up, it's similar lunge movement. So, you know, there's different ways to apply those, but if you're, you are well-rounded in implementing those variables, you're generally going to be able to um, master most other movements or pick up on most other things faster. Um, and then the last, I would say, and this comes a little bit more on the relationship side. This is something that last year I went to Sornex Summer Strong um, and listened to, I think there's 12 strength and conditioning professionals that go and speak there for about an hour. Um, it's a seminar with about 600 meatheads, um, you know, that you think it's just this big weightlifting uh, you know, gunslinging show. And it is to an extent it's at times, but, um, really the thing that was kind of shocking is nine or 10 of the speakers last year, I would say almost half of their speech was on mental health and relationship building with your athletes. Mm. Um, you know, and building that trusting relationship to know what, how is your athlete wired? What, what motivates them? What keeps them disciplined? How are you going to get the most out of them? Right. Um, I think if you don't understand how to get the most out of them and you're just coaching one way, you know, you may, you may leave an athlete out to dry or out on the table because they weren't able to absorb or take in the content you were trying to deliver to them properly. There may mm -hmm. be untapped potential there that, you know, never gets completed because, or, you know, comes to fruition because of, you know, understanding how that athlete's wired. Yeah. Good three. Yeah. Thank I think you. another like in, intermixed in that, like on, especially on the last one, I see this in business too, is like the lack of intentionality in programming fun doing something yep. just for fun because it's a good time and you're with people that you like and you know even stuff off the field of play like off the court and i talk to people like hey how about get out of the boardroom how about less powerpoint slides how about like you know it's like why don't we like go out like what do your people like to do how about challenge them have you ever gone for a walk together in a meeting a walk in a meeting walk yeah like what about like no they have to leave their phones they have to leave this and they have to go out and do it. i'm like why because you typically don't yep. and i think in a relationship with an athlete how do i calibrate like when's the you know when's the break when's the gas pedal mm -hmm. um and then when to move to the periphery even in like an olympic weightlifting like when are you doing like whatever like elevated like poles and like slow eccentric motion it's like you kind of add those things to rehone focus mm -hmm. not because it's like oh this is going to be 90 percent the reason why you do it's just making it interesting enough for people to keep showing up and i think when you think about that not just like mental health but just sport burnout Absolutely. How do you keep people calibrated? Like actually want to go, yep. actually want to show up and do something different. So, well, and I think a good reference to that too, if you've ever read the book outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, um, he talks about in there a lot of kids 
at young ages. They talk about hockey specifically in Canada. Their cutoff age for school is the first of the first of the year. And so they were watching a youth or junior national championship, I think 17, 18 year old males and 75, I think it's like 75 to 80% of the roster on both teams was born March or earlier. Hmm. And it's like, oh, that's strange, you know, but then you start breaking it down. And if these athletes that develop faster, younger, they get better opportunities to better teams nowadays, better travel ball, better, you know, better skill coaches because they want to take on better athletes. Um, you know, what's, what's that do for an athlete that's just a late bloomer, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so that's where, again, if you understand your athlete, you understand how to get the most out of them and, and see more of that potential in there. That's awesome. Thanks, Eric. All right.